Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining Scale Computing's webinar today, hosted by Ingram Micro's Emerging Business Group. My name is Carlene Edge, Marketing Manager here at DBG. Today's webinar will last approximately 45 minutes, and in terms of general housekeeping, your lines have been muted for the duration of the webinar. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the Q&A box on your screen, and we will address them at the end of the presentation. Today's webinar will be presented by Dave Demlo, VP of Product Strategy, and Scott Mann, Director of North American Channel Sales. So Scott, if you want to go ahead, the floor is yours. Thanks so much, Charlene, and, and welcome all. I uh, appreciate everybody taking some time into the day today to uh, meet with us. Uh, I'm not going to be going over a chunk of the presentation here. It's going to be Dave Demlo. I just wanted to uh, preface the presentation a little bit before we get into it. Uh, so there's been a lot of uh, a lot of talk around our video surveillance solution, and there's been a lot of interest from all our partners out there. Many of you that I see on the call already uh, have asked a lot of questions about this video surveillance solution. I feel like we fit a, a, a portion of the gap or a gap within the market that a lot of other products out there that you might be familiar with today don't address. And this is, I, I think, bringing video surveillance to uh, maybe expanding out on any of your product offerings that you currently have and going a little bit beyond and extending out that data center sale and talking about video surveillance. So even if you're not selling it today, I think this is a, a great opportunity for you to listen in and, and see how easy it can be to extend that sale and, and talk to your customers about a video surveillance solution on HD3. Um, but for today's presentation, I'm gonna actually pass it over to Dave Demo, who's our VP of product strategy. He's been integral piece to putting together the video surveillance solution for us. So no one better to pass this over to than to Dave. So without further ado, Dave, over to you. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Scott. And uh, thanks, everyone, uh, for uh, for joining today. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll give kind of an overview of the video surveillance market, how it fits into IT, uh, specifically why in many opportunities it's going to make sense to put it on hyper-converged infrastructure so you can combine the storage, the compute, get operational simplicity, simplify and centralize management, reduce the overall cost and not end up with different islands of infrastructure. Um, you know, with, you know, these dedicated purpose built, you know, video appliances that, that sit there and aren't easily expanded or aren't easily managed like the rest of uh, the IT space. So let me, okay. Um, so some of the, the trends, I mean, so uh, we are seeing, um, uh, you know, various companies in different stages of moving video surveillance and security from kind of isolated functions within larger organizations uh, and, and islands of infrastructure to integrating it into IT practices, IT management, and, and into the mainstream IT group. Some of the reasons that, that this happens are, you know, uh, many, many years ago, uh, not even, well, not that many years ago, these were analog systems, you know, CCTV, analog cameras, uh, you know, purpose-built uh, with proprietary uh, camera formats, proprietary recorders, things like that. Uh, nowadays, everything that's being deployed today is based on standard IT-based technologies, uh, you know, IP-based cameras, uh, digital recording, uh, storing on, you know, in, in standard formats, you know, like, like uh, the, you know, media streaming and so on and so forth. Uh, so the, the benefits and the needs for having proprietary purpose-built uh, recording appliances uh, has, has gone away. Uh, it can be easily streamed to general purpose computing infrastructure, you know, standalone PCs, uh, con hyper-converged clusters, virtual machines, like we're going to talk about. And that's really transformed the ability to manage these uh, with the same best practices and with the same team and resources uh, that, you know, traditional IT applications uh, benefit from. Uh, and in many cases, it's going to be suitable to actually run the video and the security applications right alongside other business applications on hyper-converged infrastructure. Uh, there's some cases where you may not want to do that, you know, very large scale system which will cover. Um, but um, uh, there's always been a management challenge in the video space. So, you know, even as there was this transition to IT, you'd have the old security teams try to pick up the new technology and, and, and have to deal with issues like building server infrastructure, installing operating systems, setting up IP networking, all the things that, you know, traditional IT organizations and IT service providers are well familiar with and, and trained in uh, dealing with other issues like how do you make these uh, critical systems highly available, uh, scalable, things like that. And uh, as in any business or any you know uh, line, affordability and, and value is, is always top of mind. So why would you virtualize video security? And this is a, uh, this is a document from Milestone, who's one of the top 
uh, VMS, if you hear the, the term in the presentation, VMS is not VMs here, it's probably video management systems or video management software. Uh, those are, you know, the, the collective set of pieces that, uh, uh, you know, receive the video streams, record it, index it, analyze it, add metadata to it, provide streaming services, um, you know, and, and so Milestone is, is one of the, the major players and one that we've partnered with along with, with many, many others. Uh, but they specifically recommend if you're designing a large scale VMS system, they recommend that you base it based on virtualization technology because of the benefits that you get of, you know, making it easy to clone and deploy new uh, servers and applications, uh, portable server images that you can move around, but not tied to a specific piece of hardware, uh, high availability support, often just built in and for free, um, seamless migration, live migration, so the ability to do uh, physical server maintenance, add capacity, replace components without uh, without impacting ongoing recording or availability, and then the ability to kind of resize uh, the the video applications as necessary. Uh, you know, give it more CPU, more uh, more virtual machines, or as we'll talk about a little bit by basing it on hyperconverged, you also get the benefit, uh, particularly with scale of um, you know, adding new nodes with new capabilities down the line, you know, adding all flash nodes if, if you know, your IO or latency needs change or adding GPU based nodes if you want to in the future be able to do in place analytics uh, on on that data. So um, virtualizing uh, VMS software and security and all the pieces that go around with it. I'll talk generally about VMS, but uh, there's a bunch of other security related pieces that generally tie are tied into and integrate uh, everything from you know access control you know door lock systems to uh, some analytic kinds of applications people counting things like that and, and those all tend to tie together and get get lumped in here so um, for many of you who are familiar with scale this will be you know kind of an overview but you know the, the old way of doing virtualization and, and certainly the uh, security focused you know legacy team is not going to go and uh, you know become vmware experts and sand storage experts and set up a, an elaborate 321 architecture just to run their their vms system um, so you know moving them right to a hyperconverged infrastructure where they get you know out of the box clustering web based management non disruptive system upgrades self healing architecture they don't have to be on top of you know constantly you know hey if a hard drive fails am i going to continue uh recording and having access to video um you know integrated backup rapid deployment seamless scale out which is a really big thing when you think about video surveillance and you know increasing numbers of camera counts uh, increasing resolution of, of content uh, and then uh, increasing retention uh, a lot of industries you know uh, for whether it's for you know regulation purposes or whether it's just hey we now see value out of we see video and security and surveillance and analytics as more than just a must do of you know hey let's see what happened last night or last weekend uh, you know starting to retain that data for a longer period of time uh, and getting value out of you know retaining data, uh, large amounts of data for a long period of time. So scale out and different ways of handling storage, like we'll talk about, become important. Um, Hyperconverge, for those you know, who may not be familiar, uh, is really just combining you know what used to be separate products from separate companies. You know, going out and buying servers from one company, storage, whether it's you know integrated or or SAN or NAS from another story sto uh, company layering in you know a third party hypervisor cobbling it all together your, yourself and, and you know checking hardware compatibility list taking getting rid of all that putting it into a single system that's a, a you know fully integrated architecture with inherent resiliency high availability and so forth um you know that's what we mean by hyperconverge in this in the video management system context uh to, to really make this clear what what some of your customers may be dealing with in, in terms of um, alternatives uh this is also the diagram on the left is also out of that same milestone document uh, and this is one of their you know recommended architectures here for setting up a fully resilient vms system and, and there's a few things you can kind of see from here is you know one um, a vms system on a larger scale may have multiple components it always always has these components whether you split them out into multiple servers or not may be required but you know on the bottom are what we all think of the recording servers that sit there streaming you know receiving data streams from the cameras writing them out to persistent storage maybe doing archiving those are kind of the you know the critical things that we all think of with video surveillance um and in, in the case of providing resiliency for those, um, most VMS systems have some level of built-in failover. And or uh, so um, what you can see here is, you know, I might have uh, resilient recording servers where there's primary recorders and then there's secondary recorders that sit there, 
do use a license, um, do run you know Windows, do use a, a piece of hardware uh, that basically sit there waiting to see if their primary server has failed. And if so, the camera streams switch over to them. They continue recording the new data. Uh, an important thing in some instances, though, is to point out that uh, that doesn't provide resiliency for the previously recorded data. It's just a standby recorder that'll resume uh, recording new feeds. But if this is an industry where I need to at any time be able to go out and say, hey, what just happened five minutes ago? This is a, you know, a retail that's very critical or in a casino, obviously, things like that. Um, these types of high availability don't provide uh, continuity for existing recorders. They just uh, uh, continue recording new streams. Um, whereas building this on HC3, you just automatically get continuity for the recorder. You don't even have to set up a standby. It's just any workload, uh, any virtual machine and all of its data is inherently highly available, will fail over from you know, a full node failure even and resume on other nodes of the cluster, easily handle you know, other things like you know, disk or network failures. Uh, then across the top, you get into you know some of these other pieces that you know are part of a VMS system. Um, the management server is kind of the key one. You can think of that as the brain that keeps track of all the pieces. These are all the cameras that I have. These are all the uh, recorder systems that I have. These are all the other peripheral things, uh, and uh, that's a very critical piece to uh, to keep available if you want to be able to you know uh, access video and look at indexes and things like that. Uh, so in their document, they're actually recommending that you build a hardware physical windows server failover cluster with you know again an active standby kind of configuration uh and then you know potentially for other pieces there's a, a component called the event server uh that you know handles a lot of the metadata and alerting and things like that could be another windows server cluster so that would be a very complex way uh and a very inefficient way uh to provide for redundancy and failover uh, for a vms system and, and over on the end there you've got a, a sql server that you probably you know also want high availability for Whereas putting it on hyperconverged, you get automatic resiliency. Everything you do, everything you create, whether it's a recorder, or whether it's you know any of these other roles or other applications, uh, is inherently highly available. Uh, you know, kind of across the top. If you're not familiar with HC3, uh, this is showing a picture of a four-node system. Uh, each of those, the little white boxes, are, are virtual machines running on those systems. So I think this particular one, when we took the screenshot, had eight video recorder servers running in virtual machines. Um, and, uh, you know, if any one of those nodes failed, there was more than sufficient uh, compute resources available RAM for the recorders running on that nodes to fail over and resume operation on one of the other nodes uh, automatically and, and so forth. And, and also proactively, like if uh, there was a new um, scale had a new upgrade for HC3, we can apply that to one of these clusters without taking any virtual machines down in a non-disruptive rolling upgrade, uh, which is another key thing of, you know, keeping continuity. And then along the bottom, this is just kind of the, this is the storage view showing uh, in this particular case, the, this cluster, again, four nodes, each one of these uh, nodes has its own local storage that's managed by HC3. Uh, these were, uh, I think, 17 18 terabyte drives in each particular node. So there was a, this was a high-end configuration, about a petabyte of total storage. Most video recorders are nowhere close to that. I think this was 800 cameras, four megapixel or four megabit streams, fairly high resolution and long retention that, that was designed for here. Um, but the key is it's all easy. It's just, you know, HC3 is that, you know, autonomous self-healing infrastructure and then deploying, you know, virtual machines uh, is, is very easy and inherently, uh, uh, secure. So again, why, uh, to summarize, you know, why hyperconverged infrastructure for video surveillance? It's a simplified single pane management, and I will, uh, wish we should have some time, I'll at least give everyone a quick run through of the HC3 user interface, very rapid deployment of the HC3 system, both initially and when you need to add capacity, when you need to add uh, additional uh, storage resources, additional compute resources, intelligent automation of many tasks, you know, things like disk drive replacement, uh, are you know simplified you don't have to it's not like a, a raid system where you have to go in and you know do a bunch of things manually uh, high availability uh, keeps the systems running absorbs hardware failures and, and keeps the application applications running uh, lets you buy what you need when you need it and scale easily and um, you know that that's um, uh, trying to anticipate what capacity and performance needs and you know in, in many years out is very difficult and uh, so the ability to buy what you know you need today knowing you can add and expand later and a, a unique thing about scale if you're not familiar is that we do allow you to mix and match 
different nodes. So you're not, you know, with the node you buy today, uh, you don't have to buy the same thing in a couple of years or in a year. Uh, you can buy the latest, greatest, deepest, you know, fastest, cheapest and mix and match. There's, you know, always logical rules and, and best practices there, but uh, we do design wherever possible to allow new generations, you know, higher capacity, higher performance systems to be intermingled uh, with that. No expert certifications to, to manage uh, and then no complex, expensive third party virtualization licensing. Everything that you need uh, to begin deploying your VMS system uh, is is built in, um, you know, the hypervisor, the storage, the compute and so forth. Um, what do customers value most? Again, simplicity, the unified management, everything's pre-configured, fast to deploy, all the high availability pieces. You know, it's just designed to be autonomous and automatic. Uh, you know, a disk drive fails, it's going to take care of that for you. Make sure the systems, you know, continue to run, data is available, uh, you're, you're fully redundant and resilient. And then at some point you replace the hard drive, and, you know, un under warranty, but it's not a fire drill to go uh, to go do that. Um, integrated backup, uh, replication, disaster recovery built in, uh, scalability uh, from a single node. And I'll actually in the demo show a single node deployment on many smaller environments, uh, you know, what we call edge type you know computing systems uh, where you know there's maybe no IT and and uh, uh, you know they just need kind of limited on-prem uh, resources you can start with a scale uh, a single node uh, you can scale out you know from there uh, cluster and I, I mentioned the mix mix and match and then everything built in you know complete stack with software support with services uh, all in at, at uh, much lower prices so, um, so HC3 infrastructure for video surveillance. I talked through this a little bit more. Um, you know, so uh, you know, kind of the, the red circle at the top, you know, would represent, you know, a, a in that case, a three-node HC3 cluster running virtual machines. Uh, you've got, you know, the cameras there streaming their data over the network, you know, into uh, the virtual machines running whatever VMS software. And we'll talk about some of the uh, the different options there. Uh, users, you know, security people monitoring. Uh, uh, you know, monitoring the video streams and events and so on and so forth there. Um, uh, a key point here is uh, that, it, you know, you get the high availability, uh, but you also kind of inherently, um, you're able to design a more powerful system using a collection or a cluster of less expensive systems, uh, which is infinitely more uh, efficient when it comes to then, then trying to buy the biggest, baddest, fastest, beefiest server you can buy, uh, put all the redundancy you can, you know, into that, and then cross your fingers that, you know, you don't have a CPU failure or, you know, motherboard failure or things like that. Um, and video surveillance, unlike a lot of applications, is one of those that is naturally just super easy to load balance. So, you know, as I described before, and you can see here, uh, rather than having, you know, even four big video recorders, uh, it actually made a lot of sense in this uh, deployment to split it up into smaller chunks that can be moved around. So say, for example, we add a new node uh, because we already have eight recorders, maybe we add a new node and we add, uh, you know, move one of the recorders over, uh, add a new one, Depend, you know, we, we have a lot more flexibility to distribute um, and distribute the load across multiple recorders, multiple physical servers, use lower cost servers and, uh, you know, uh, uh, get a collection and, and achieve high availability uh, through that, that clustering capability, yet keeping it very, very simple to manage. So uh, in terms of other server workloads, uh, you know, again, we're focusing on on video surveillance but uh but hc3 runs them all i mean you know virtual machines containers kubernetes anything that you know runs on x86 hardware and can be virtualized which is almost everything uh will run on hc3 and uh our systems engineering team can uh, help you design you know the, the right uh the right system whether it makes sense to combine you know database analytics your erp file server storage, video backup, you know, how much of this to run on a, a, a single cluster versus having a couple of clusters, maybe with different pools of resources. Um, but that's also really kind of a key thing in the video surveillance because, um, you know, they have to tie into Active Directory. There has to be an Active Directory server there for security. If they're providing external streaming access, which is very common, there's going to be a firewall and, and some sort of, you know, external proxy server to get access to that. Uh, in many cases, they're going to use um, VDI type technologies or remote desktop technologies to provide monitoring, uh, you know, to actually, uh, you know, virtualize the, the desktops that are doing the security monitoring rather than having physical boxes that have to be uh, patched and maintained and so forth. So, um, you know, another benefit of, of, you know, virtualization is that you can, you can put everything. You can have your, your whole, uh, you know, 
uh, site, you know, you know, whether you're a retail store or a uh, manufacturing facility, you know, in a box and, and run all your, your critical applications there uh, with that same high availability and ease of use. Um, so let me switch over and just kind of give a, a quick demo um, for those who haven't seen the HE3 system live. Um, and again, we do weekly demos. We can we can go um, you know very in depth. Um, so um, just you know kind of some things to show here. Uh, let's just filter on running systems. Uh, so uh, this cluster is actually pretty busy. It's doing some other stuff at this point other than video, although there is some uh, some milestone video actually running here. Um, well, let's just go, you know, how easy it is to create a new virtual machine. So, uh, you know, this is a four node HE3 system. I point a web browser to any one of the nodes in the cluster. It doesn't have to be uh, any specific node. There's no separate management server that I need to install or maintain or patch. Um, you know, log in with, you know, credentials or we, you can integrate with Active Directory. And let's just create a VM, we'll call it test. Uh, we want to go ahead and install Windows. Uh, let's go ahead and give this one, you know, 16 virtual cores. We'll give it 16 gig of RAM. Uh, we want our boot drive to be 300 gig. We're going to do some video, so let's give it uh, let's give it a couple of eight terabyte uh, virtual disks on here, and we'll, we'll boot from a Windows Server ISO and install Windows. So, uh, you know, with just that, you know, quick uh, configuration, we'll go ahead and click create. Let me filter on that. Just takes a couple seconds to create the the metadata there. And then uh, we'll go ahead and spin it up, and you know it's that easy to you know create a new virtual machine and power it on. And in this case, we would begin installing Windows uh, in, into this virtual machine. Um, everything you need, you know. Again, we've talked a lot about high availability, but sometimes uh, you know there's proactive uh, you know maintenance you want to do. Uh, let me uh, let's pick a small VM here. Uh, this uh, Red Hat Core OS test. Uh, I can live migrate it right now. It's running on this node here. If I click this migrate button here, let's say for resource balancing, I want to move it over to that node. I can do that without any shutdown, without you know any disruption, uh, so on and so forth. Um, so we do actually have milestone running here. Uh, so uh, you know my milestone system here. You can see this is actually doing some some real work. It's running some CPU, ingesting some data. We'll go ahead and look at the uh, the console running here. It's a, a Windows server, uh, and this has got all the uh, milestone stuff for record. We'll just look at the status message, but nothing too exciting. It's sitting there receiving data. Actually, I think I probably have a task manager here. Uh, receiving data, storing it out to, to disk, and all being managed by a uh, remote management server there. Uh, so you have everything you need to, um, you know, to manage. And then for resources outside of that, uh, things like uh, you know integrated snapshots, replication. If I wanted to set up a replication schedule, I can do that here. Um, let's see, we'll pick uh, replication default and actually that's a snapshot schedule. Uh, replication, uh, I would pick you know from a target cluster. In this case, I already have one target cluster that I could replicate to. Uh, this is a pretty large VM and I don't want to replicate it. So I'm not gonna go ahead and uh, do the button there, but all those kinds of capabilities are built in, super easy to, uh, to manage and utilize. Uh, another thing I wanna show is really on the small end. So um, I've got a server here and this is a single node system as I mentioned earlier. So uh, there's only one node in this particular uh, system here. Uh, it's running a bunch of different workloads like maybe you would see in a uh, small store uh, there you know again because this is a one node system there's no automatic high availability here so i would definitely want to leverage uh, replication to another system and so on and so forth here uh, but this is actually running a a small milestone system here and uh, we actually um, are listed on the milestone marketplace have validated this is based on our he150 small form factor system these are the little four inch by four inch cubes um, and um, uh, we had my, uh, actually uh, validated a three node cluster of these uh, running milestone VMS with 25 cameras, which would be you know, more than adequate for you know, a smaller retail organization or a lot of uh, locations alongside other, you know, we, we were kind of simulating a retail store in that case uh, or along other applications that you would find in a, in a retail store. But this is again, a single node system. The management is all, all the same. Uh, and um, let me just actually show you a, a three node configuration. Again, with the, this is the small form factor system doing some other applications here. Um, these are a little bit bigger. These ones have 64 gig of RAM, uh, but then, then again, these are still the small form factor systems. And one of the things I do wanna point out is um, we do have a wide variety of nodes. I talked about mix and match and the ability to 
um, you know, add nodes of different types. You can also add nodes with different resources. So, you know, a common question, particularly relating to video uh, with VMS is, well, what if I need a lot more storage? I just, I've, I've increased my retention retirement you know, requirements. I need a lot more storage. I don't necessarily need compute. I just need to keep data longer. There's a few ways to handle that, particularly with video. You can archive to external storage or things like that. Uh, but Scale does have the ability to, to we have very storage heavy nodes uh, and you can buy nodes that are storage heavy, just minimal compute and turn them into what we call storage only mode, uh, which is something that uh, support sets up. And so this node here on the right that uh, doesn't show any of the white virtual machines running, uh, that's a mode that uh, a node that was set in that particular case. So this is almost where you would kind of call this a two and a half node cluster here. I've got two compute nodes. I've got three nodes that are actually contributing to storage and maintaining cluster quorum um, so that you know you don't have um, accidental failovers and, and things like that. Uh, but uh, but this is you know the cheapest node that we make on the right there, and it's just contributing storage uh, and um, you know doesn't need the same amount of RAM or same computer things like that. So there's a lot of different design options that uh, that we can help you with uh, when it comes to um, sizing and so forth. So let me switch back to here. All right, so uh, talking about VMS software on HC3. Um, all VMS software out there is, you know, generally Windows or Linux. Uh, I've started to see there's some coming out in container form, things like that, but generally they're Windows apps, Linux applications uh, that, you know, we run Windows and Linux and containers all day long. Uh, so you can install, you know, those uh, running inside HC3 virtual machines. Some of the popular ones that uh, we've tested or are validated with or have customers running. Uh, I've mentioned Milestone X Protect many times. Uh, Genetech is another major player that we've worked with. Uh, Axis, uh, Digital Watchdog, Blue Iris, Pelco. Uh, there are, there's a super long laundry list of, of VMS providers out there. Uh, these are a lot of the top ones. Um, uh, Miracis, I guess, is one that, that we actually partner with as well. Um, you know, the general rule, if it, if it runs on uh, Windows or runs on Linux, uh, Windows and Linux, Linux run great on HC3 and it'll probably run there. Uh, the only exceptions would be is if they have any specific hardware direct, hardware physical integration as opposed to using IP network cameras. But uh, most everyone at this point uh, is uh, more or less camera agnostic. There's an open standard called ONVIF, O-N-V-I-F, um, that they all support for IP-based cameras. Uh, some have their own proprietary cameras and that's fine as long as they're you know, IP-based and just connect into the recording server uh, using IP. Uh, so scale is uh, milestone verified and listed in the milestone market with several different configurations. Uh, they just happen to be one that has a very good ecosystem and a, a process for submitting uh, tested validated configurations to a you know, specific, uh, uh, specific simulation size, how many cameras, how much retention, things like that. Um, so, but uh, running VMS on, on HC3 and hyperconverge is very well suited, especially for distributed edge locations, retail, entertainment, hospitality, manufacturing, um, you know, can run all their critical on-premises applications on a single resilient platform. Uh, and then I would say also consider the benefits of running other physical security applications, your access control, and then just the basic infrastructure things that, that you need everywhere, like your Active Directory, your DNS, uh, maybe virtual firewall appliances, things like that to reduce the physical footprints, you know, take out the number of physical pieces of hardware uh, in these remote unmanaged locations and, and reduce the, uh, the overall management overhead. Um, so just some ideas on, you know, cluster sizing examples, like I said, uh, actually, I'm sorry, it was 50 cameras. I think I mentioned 25, but uh, what we did validate was actually 25 on a single uh, single node. It was in a cluster, but it was a, a node with an Intel i7 based CPU and those small form factor systems. So it was ingesting 200 megabits per second on that, that single node um, that is listed in the uh, milestone marketplace, that configuration. You know, only it's just six cores, 12 threads, up to 64 gig of RAM, up to four terabytes of storage directly on the node. And then you can obviously cluster those together for more. Uh, but that configuration, that model, the HE150 uh, model, um, and uh, Scott's going to talk a little bit about a, a demo promotional offer that we have, uh, that starts at under 15,000 MSRP for a three node uh, highly available configuration on, on the base level. Uh, and then in the medium, uh, these are you know some of the different scale models that you might see. And eight, our HC5200 cluster um, will easily run 100 cameras, uh, about 75 per node is what we recommend. Uh, so across a three-node cluster, 
Um, you know, we got to about 900 megabits per second and there's, you know, definitely plenty of network, plenty of storage IOPS there. Uh, and then even in the single node configuration, uh, uh, we did 50 cameras and that has multiple drives. So it has storage, local uh, storage, local storage resiliency. Uh, on the large end, you know, things get complicated. And here, I think, you know, when you're getting into the thousand camera range, it probably does make sense just because of the different storage requirements, different kinds of CPU tuning that you can do uh, to have a dedicated video, you know, storage cluster at that point. Um, and, um, but, uh, you know, we have a variety of partners. We have some very large scale systems in large, you know, large enough systems. There's even some custom type systems that are available. And we do partner there with, you know, companies that offer extensive experience integrating security surveillance systems for very critical environments like casinos and airports and so forth. Uh, but, but we can help, you know, put together uh, the right, you know, software, hardware and configuration for even those very large scale uh, type of environments. Just some general solutions design and uh, again, you know, work with your uh, scale sales team. Uh, VMS systems all have, you know, calculators that, that do sizing. And, and the good news about this is it's a fairly constant workload and it's just math. I mean, if you have hundred cameras at four megabits, you know, stream, uh, you can calculate how much, you know, ingress bandwidth you need for that. So uh, there's all sorts of calculators where you, you know, number of cameras, what kind of bit rate, what percent motion, if you're only recording motion events versus constant motion, uh, how long do you want to retain the data, uh, and they'll then spit out. This is how much storage, you know, effective storage you need. In some cases, they'll guide you on a uh, number of, you know, kinds of CPUs and, and NICs. Uh, I would say in general, you know, CPU cycles um, are the most critical in VMS, so don't skimp on CPU cores and cycles when it comes to that. Uh, and unlike a lot of other virtual machine environments or, or applications where they're not going to use that CPU again, these are going to sit there, you know, doing this work, receiving the data, ingesting it constantly. So uh, they're going to use the, you know, the CPU that's calculated and, and uh, allocated to them. Um, we would definitely recommend, uh, regardless of, you know, the, the rest of the network in the facility, uh, if you're getting into a higher configuration, 10 gigabit networking is worth it, at least in the backbone and, and between the HC3 nodes. And you can do 10 gigabit there, but then have one gigabit out from the cameras and to your users and so forth. But uh, if you're gonna do you know, this constant stream of data ingest from the cameras, writing it out to storage, and, and then if you're familiar with HC3, everything that's written, we're gonna use that same network, you know, the backplane connection uh, to replicate redundant copies of data to the other nodes. So, uh, 10 gigabit ports are cheap and, um, you know, especially with 10 gig base T and well worth it, at least on the, uh, the HE3 system. Um, you can consider archiving um, data off primary systems to external SAN, NAS, or even cloud for long-term retention. Um, you know, I would say, for example, there are some regulated industries where they need to kind of keep everything almost forever or keep it for seven years, I've heard, uh, in these cases. And in that case, you know, designing your primary production HC3 video recorder system to keep all that probably doesn't make sense. And most of the VMS software does provide facilities to archive on a schedule. And it can even do things like, um, you know, well, reduce the bandwidth or reduce the resolution and then archive it off to a remote, uh, remote system. Uh, I think I already mentioned, consider splitting recording servers across nodes for, for load balancing and, and, and other benefits. Um, and then, uh, you know, another point, Multiple clusters are also easy to manage. So at some point, you know, if you're questioning, hey, do we, you know, cram these, you know, this many cameras into this five or six node system, it might be just as easy to have two, three node systems and uh, uh, distribute them there and give you more room to, to grow down the line. Um, and then just a point on, on kind of storage. Um, uh, you know, there's all different kinds of storage we offer that's available, but with video storage, um, what you generally need is capacity and you need kind of constant latency. Um, Cause it's again, gonna sit there just receiving streams, writing them out to disk. It's not, you're not gonna have peaks and valleys. So flash is not always required or even good necessarily for, uh, for video workloads. And uh, especially when you uh, use a method that we call wide striping. So in, in the case of HC3, anything that a VM writes, regardless of what node it's on is chunks of that data are distributed uh, evenly across all the, the physical disk on all the nodes. So uh, in that one cluster, I already said there were 17 drives in each node. Every recorder can write some of its data and stripe it across all those. And when you aggregate 
all the IOPS that are available, you know, even if you say it's, you know, 50 to 100 IOPS per disk, but you've got that many disks, uh, it's a lot of a lot of capability. And um, the next thing then you consider is, well, what if one of those fails? You know, what's a, a rebuild time? And again, that's where a large number of disks all working as a team um, can really do a lot of work. So um, we generally recommend uh, still for larger video surveillance systems that you use one of our hybrid nodes that has both flash and spinning disk. Uh, and that's where you can actually use our, what we call our heat priority, um, which um, lets you, gives you a little slider on each virtual disk in a virtual machine that you can go in and say, well, I, I only wanna use flash capacity for the operating system uh, so that I can have, you know, fast reboots and patching and, you know, any kind of database, you know, that might live there. But on, you know, the secondary drive, I wanna put that all on spinning disk and not waste the flash capacity uh, of, you know, storing uh, videos and so forth. So. Uh, just some general solution designs there. Uh, a quick case study, um, and I think there's, there's some video, and actually uh, we did a, uh, Jeff Miller and I, who's pictured here, did a, a webinar similar to this on, on video surveillance where he told uh, you know, some of his story, but uh, Jerry's Enterprises is a, a retail chain uh, founded in 1947 with 50 locations, several different brands. Some of the things you might've heard of are Cub Foods. They, they operate some Cub Foods facility, but they're a, a retailer. Uh, they required, among other things, you know, on-prem uh, video surveillance systems that were uh, easy to use, highly available. Um, each of their stores has 80 to 100 cameras, and they generally keep uh, everything for 30 to 45 days uh, to assist with fraud, fraud protection, uh, lawsuits that come against them, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, you know, they love their HC3 system. Uh, they've used a variety and are using a variety of VMS software. They use some milestone, they use some um, digital watchdog and, and uh, you know, kind of comparing them off. But uh, um, they, they rely heavily on their video surveillance. Unfortunately, some of their stores were located uh, in Minneapolis uh, during the riots and they actually needed to rely on and actually go in and physically retrieve uh, their entire HC3 system that had all the store data uh, and uh, the video surveillance, uh, was, it was being replicated, but they just wanted to retrieve all of it. And uh, I think one of those systems is still in FBI custody and said, um, but um, so there's more information on online. Outside of that, you know, scale generally is, you know, trusted by thousands of customers, you know, everything from small uh, you know, SMB type uh, organizations to very large distributed enterprises. And a lot of the, uh, you know, the kinds of locations where uh, where you'd see the need for this on-prem edge computing, you know, manufacturing, um, uh, you know, hospitality, retail, uh, quick serve restaurants, uh, you, you know, you see all, all those kinds of things represented up here. And video surveillance is, is pretty prominent across uh, most of these segments. Um, certainly in the retail space, it's, it's everywhere. And we're starting to see where it's not already being been done more and more, uh, you know, the, the separate security team with their own gear, their own infrastructure, their own management, relying on uh, IT uh, to, to run all those critical applications together. Um, we take great pride in, in our reviews, uh, you know, both from end users and channel partners. Uh, and it's you know, a great selling tool for you. We can help out, uh, you know, uh, have hundreds of reviews on all of these sites, you know, uh, and, and have won uh, awards as one of the top rated uh, hyperconverged vendors uh, you know, across a number of these sites. But uh, in your selling process, we can help you find customers that are just like your prospects, often down the street. And so reach out to us uh, for help uh, when it comes to uh, support there. Uh, and then just a quick you know, summary here on our, our product line. I've covered, you know, our, it's really our goal to have uh, capacity, performance, and price systems uh, you know, for, to run the full gamut. So everything from smaller edge deployments where form factor, you know, physical size, half rack, those, you know, you can see on the very left, those little, uh, you know, the HE-150 systems that I've mentioned a couple of times to, you know, tower-based systems where they're appropriate to, you know, full high-end GPU loaded, all, all NVMe uh, nodes on, you know, on the high end you know, for core processing and analytics, uh, and then also tying it into cloud for DR as a service and, and so forth. So with that, uh, I'd like to uh, get Scott back on. Yeah, thanks, Dave. That was that was excellent. Uh, always always great to hear the, the video surveillance take from you. Um, I, I just want to finish this off with really, you know, what are next steps? There's a lot of great information that we learned here today. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you're gonna have to digest on that information and have conversations. This this video will be available on demand after if you want to share it with any of your 
peers, your colleagues, uh, to get their take on it. And if you wanna have a follow-up conversation, um, let's do that. We can dive in deeper, talk about specific customer use cases. Um, but for those that aren't a partner yet, um, what, what are the first steps to getting started? I've kind of summarized it here in two quick steps. Uh, first is obviously sign up as a partner. You can go to partners.scalecomputing.com. On the top left, you'll see that there's a become a partner, apply now. Click there, you just have to fill out your email address. Um, and it's a, it's a quick contact info fill out. And uh, there's literally a one click sign up from a partner perspective. There's, there's no minimum requirements, no sales, sales quotas or anything uh, to be a part of the partner community. So it, it is very seamless to become part of it. Um, and then it's just figuring out where do we fit together? Let's, let's build out a strategy. Let's put a marketing plan in place and see where we can capitalize on some opportunities within the market together. Um, and once you get, do get signed up, it's it, how do I get my team familiarized with this? How do I better understand what Dave is talking about here today? And, and the best way to do that is take your hands on one of the systems. Um, Dave mentioned our, our HD 150 system that you can see there. Uh, you can Google the HD 150. We won product of the year with CRN with it. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a very highly sought after system that we have in place right now. Um, and for our partners, what we want to do is we want to get your hands on it. So uh, your from from a, a customer perspective, it's something that you can take to your customers. From an internal perspective, it's something you can use to uh, enable your technical team and familiarize yourself with the capabilities. Uh, run video workloads, run VDI workloads, run regular infrastructure workloads on there as well. Um, and to, to check out more on that, you can go to you can just put HU150 partner promo, Google that scale computing, and uh, that'll pop up on the on on Google for you. But we can definitely get you more information on that. And then and the brochure and everything is in the partner portal. So once you sign up, you'll have access to that. Um, and that'll get you access to one of a, a cluster to play around with, um, as well as our data center infrastructure certification so that you understand what the uh, installation, migration, and, and networking process looks like so that you can go and make all your professional services dollars when you do install these at the first customer we run together. And with that, uh, we will jump over, I think, to questions in the next slide. If you want to jump to that last slide, there's Dave. Uh, it does have our email on here as well, uh, channel at scalecomputing.com. Any general questions, feel free to shoot those over to that, that alias. Sure. And uh, yeah, so anyone online, uh, feel free to submit some questions and uh, we can come in here and answer them live. Um, let's see, we do have one here uh, I'll answer. Uh, Question is for large scale video surveillance deployments, what are the best options for high capacity storage with HC3? Um, so again, I talked a little bit about, uh, you know, depending on what your retention requirements are, um, you know, we can easily go up to, you know, a petabyte in a cluster. And um, uh, you know, if you need more, you can have multiple clusters. Um, you know, a lot does depend on uh, you know, what level of high availability, what level of access, what level of performance do you need? Uh, for you know, for all those, does it make sense to keep that all on HC3 for its entire lifetime, uh, or you know, leverage other storage? And and again, it, you know, access time, cost, uh, a bit reliability are all factors to consider there. Um, on some of the uh, edge systems, for example, uh, after we did the initial uh, validation of the the 50 cameras on that you know small HC150 small form factor system, uh, we did also another validation run where uh, we kept the data there just on locally stored on the system for about 14 days. And then after that, actually set up a archival system where um, uh, ultimately the data got up to Azure file storage and then was kept for several months uh, up there uh, using a combination of capabilities in that case within the milestone software to do the archiving from the primary local hard disk storage that we provide you know, through HC3 to a remote file share uh, which in that case ha actually happened to be a file server virtual machine that was running on HC3 that was backed by um, a technology called Azure File Sync uh, from from Microsoft Azure Service, where which basically uh, you know takes what's on that Windows file share and moves it up to Azure Blob Storage, and then based on policies that you set there, like you know after it's been there a day or seven days or you know when there's capacity needs, it actually removes or stubs the file locally on the file storage it still looks to users like it's there with the applications it still looks like it's there in the directory uh, but it's actually just a zero byte placeholder 
And if anything goes and touches that file for some reason, uh, it just fetches it down from Azure. So it takes a little bit longer to read, you know, remotely from the cloud, but uh, kind of gives you um, uh, infinite file storage capacity uh, there and, you know, can leverage some low, uh, low cost cloud storage. And there's many similar systems that, that do uh, the, the same, uh, some, same or similar kinds of things, um, you know, that do some kind of, you know, on-prem tiering uh, or caching essentially uh, backed by, you know, cloud storage for a longer, longer term and lower cost uh, storage. And all right, so that's uh, that looks like the only question. Unless I don't know, Scott, do you see anything over on your side or? No, I think that's it, Dave. I think you you covered everything. Awesome. All right, so we are all set. Thank you guys so much for presenting today, and everybody on the line. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, we will send out a follow up email with the recording of the webinar. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out. Thanks again, guys. Everybody have a good day.